Hey guys, it's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all having a wonderful day as always. So I'm just going to get right into it. If you remember my last video, if you guys watched it, I hope you did. I let you know that I was going to research the women that were interviewed in the prison documentary. So this is the follow-up to the prison documentary in which I spoke about these five women as well as Cheyenne Harris, whom you probably are familiar with, especially if you've been to my channel, My Squash, because I have covered her on there as well. So today we're going to talk about one of these women that is shown here. And here we go. So I decided to start off with Judy White for a few reasons. First of all, it was your top choice. I had asked which which one you guys preferred and I got a lot of Judy Whites. Uh, I think that's probably because she's just somebody you can kind of sympathize with. She was one of the ones, she was just very sweet, very nice. She's just a little old lady. And she happens to be someone who had an update coming. So of course that made the most sense. We were left with kind of a cliffhanger on the prison documentary because Judy White did get a letter confirming that she was going to be able to go to the parole board and at least discuss the chance of getting commuted to a lower sentence. And that would have been 30 years and basically she'd be leaving. She'd be able to get out free, right? It turned out that the governor of Iowa, Governor Kim Reynolds, was going to have to decide whether or not to commute Judy White's sentence. And she ended up having a deadline of August 25th. And now it's, it is August 29th. So August 29th, where's Judy at? She's in prison. She was denied. So she will not be getting out of prison. So it looks like she's going to be spending the rest of her life there. I thought that she was going to get out. Her daughter had said, apparently Kim Reynolds is somebody who is all about second chances and there's a quote that she had said that I thought was really strange to the daughter about uh, Kim Reynolds liking to give second chances specifically to women. I'll have to see if I can find that and show you guys. I thought that was a little bit strange but you know it seemed like um, I for sure thought she was getting out. She had another chance before in 2005 I believe it was 15 years ago and she didn't get it then either. If you watch the documentary on the prison system that Judy was in, you probably heard her describe what had happened that got her into prison. And I wanted to delve in and see if she was telling a true story. So just to quickly describe what she said, hopefully you guys already saw it. If you didn't, check it out. I did have it on my channel. It got taken down, so you can find it if you probably search for Stacy Dooley, BBC documentary, Locked Up with the Lifers, something like that. You should find it presumably on YouTube somewhere. So there you go. But basically what Judy White had said was kind of strange if you ask me, which is kind of what led me to think, let's look into this or into all these cases because they all seemed like they were clearly at least downplaying their case to a little degree. And with her story, she was kind of laughing as she discussed it. So I thought that was weird in itself. But then she went on to explain that while she was sitting, talking to the wife of the victim, and she said she was laughing because she joked around saying that there was a weird guy who had been at the house the other night and they could probably pay him $50 to kill someone. She said that that was basically it. But then they took it upon themselves to follow through with that and we ended up with a murder. And the main problem was that she didn't tell anyone. She knew they were thinking about it, she knew that they had done it, and she didn't tell anyone at any time. So that's what she said her reason for being put in prison was. However, the woman was put in prison for life, for first degree murder. So this was not a small charge. It wasn't a, she didn't tell anyone, so she's gonna be convicted and sent to prison for life. So with that said, let's get into what I have researched and found to be what actually happened that got Judy White sent to prison. And let's not forget, we're looking at a 74 year old in this documentary that's been in jail, in prison, 
be it sometimes easy prison, for 41 years. So it's very easy to look at an older woman that's, you know, kind of just settled into the routine and see a nice lady and feel bad for her. But you have to think about the fact that she was only 33 when she went to prison. She was a different person. If we look at her then and now, you're looking at a different person. We don't know what she was like then. We only see snippets of what she's like now even. So we don't know anything other than what we're seeing in a documentary. I do believe Judy looks like a very nice person now, but we don't have a clue what she was at 30 years old. But I am gonna tell you what I do know. So first of all, this case is a little bit confusing just because of how many people are involved. There's a lot of characters in this plot, but there's a lot of people in this murder case, I guess is how, how I should explain it. We got the wife of the victim, Jean Jensen, a cute name, right? We've got the victim, A.D. Jensen, her husband. Then we have Judy White. Her name used to be Judy Kearns. Her husband, Robert Kearns, he was also involved in this. Then we have the hitman, whose name was Andrew Ogilvy. Then we have the parents of A.D. Jensen, who are involved in the story a bit, and I'll get into that later. So we've got, what, seven people that play a part in this case. So it's already a little bit complicated in that situation. Judy White was sitting there talking to her friend, Jean Jensen, and Jean was saying that she really just wanted to get rid of her husband. She even admitted that she was cheating on him. She had a lot of different affairs, and she just didn't want to be in this relationship anymore. But her main, the main quote taken from that was that she wanted to be rid of her husband. I want to get rid of my husband. And Judy said, not as a joke as it sounds, said, my husband can find anyone to kill someone for $50. Something to that effect. So it wasn't, oh, this is so funny. I bet you we could pay this guy 50 bucks to kill somebody, or I bet we could get this weirdo from yesterday to kill somebody. No, she supposedly said that her husband can find someone to do the job for 50 bucks. 50 bucks, right? And that's what happened. They got Andrew Ogilvy to be a hitman for $50, only $50. And not only that, but they also, and this is where it got to be a big collusion between everybody, that Robert Kearns was in the life insurance business. So Robert Kearns, his wife Judy, who's now Judy White, and the wife of the victim, Jean Jensen, the three of them got together to create a life insurance policy on the victim so that the three of them could share $50,000. Now, whose idea that was or what, it kind of seems to be put on Robert as if Robert kind of got that ball rolling, but the wife also agreed to it and there we go. So the three of them were involved in having this man killed for insurance as well. And Judy was involved in that. So Judy was involved in plotting this, it sounds like. I'm sorry, guys. Judy was involved the in three plotting this. That conspired murder. to set up this plan. We're going to split $50,000, but the hitman was only getting $50. I mean, that's a crazy situation. That's weird. That's crazy. And who's the guy who's taking a $50 payment to murder someone? And what happens is really messed up, too. It's a funky story from start to finish, from the minute it starts being discussed to the time people start getting arrested and especially the sentences that are given to each person involved. So she even said herself she should get maybe 25 years for not saying anything, but a life sentence is not fair. And she also explained that she got a longer sentence than everybody else did. And we're gonna get into that. And I have to say that that is true sort of, in unfair. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. But they were all conspiring. She was involved. She wasn't just a, oh, I made a joke and then someone got killed. No, she was involved. She was involved to the point where after this murder had happened, 
and they were going to be arrested a few months later. The investigators showed up at the house to arrest them and they were actually packing up a U-Haul to skip town. So, I mean, there you go. Now, it's interesting that Andrew Ogilvy, the hitman, he actually tried on several occasions to kill this man before it actually happened. March 19th so, of 1979 is when they discussed having this happen and who they were going to talk to about being the hitman, $50 hitman. And then on March 25th or 26th is when they did the whole life insurance situation. And then in April, there were several attempts to kill this man. And the final attempt happened on April 14th. But interestingly enough, April 9th and April 13th is when they tried to actually blow up the man's car. First, Ogilvy said he was going to use a Molotov cocktail to blow up the car with A.D. Jensen, the victim, in the car. That did not work out because I guess he wired it and I guess A.D. figured it out before it had a chance to blow up and got out of the truck. Then they tried to poison him. That didn't work. They didn't get into detail about how they did that or how it didn't, it didn't work. And it's not funny. But it is. It's so strange. But on April 14th, it really happened. On April 14th, actually starting on April 13th, the hitman, Andrew Ogilvy and Robert Kern drove over to the home that A.D. Jensen was staying at. That was his parents' house. And they went in, they broke into the house, the mother and father of A.D. Jensen, A.D. Jensen who was 39 at the time, so the parents were up in age. They tied the parents up for 12 hours, these, these people were t tied up, while Ogilvy actually threatened them and told them why, gave them reasons why they, they were there to kill their son. I mean, terrifying time, 12 hours being tied up with this crazy person in their house with them. And the wife, Jean Jensen, was at A.D. Jensen's place of employment, keeping an eye on him. And when he left his job, she contacted them to let them know he's on his way over there. So when he got there, they tied him up as well. And then Andrew Ogilvy, the hitman, ended up shooting him twice with a shotgun. He was shot once in his front, once in his back, and he died. They did end up untying the parents. They let them go, but they did threaten them that they could come back at any time and kill them. So... You have to think about the living victims. I've said this so many times. The living victims are important. These two people now had to live on with the grief of their son being dead, the grief of and trauma of being there for it, and knowing that their daughter-in-law had caused this to happen, and being scared for years. And that was what a friend said. They were scared for years that someone could come back and kill them. So they lived on after this with fear and trauma and who knows who knows how long that lasted for but that's terribly sad terribly so sad. that's how this happened judy was involved in conspiring to everything judy was involved in the money and the life insurance policy and judy was packing up to get out of there three months before she got arrested interestingly enough the life insurance company where robert worked at found something odd about this situation and the life insurance policy. So someone who worked with him, I think the owner of the place, started actually working with the investigators, uh, taping phone conversations they had and getting them to talk. And they eventually ended up getting the wife who started this whole thing, Jean Jensen, to confess and help them catch the hitman and the Kearns. Now, this is the most interesting part to me. Beyond the fact of all this horrible, this horrible murder that happened and everything else, the sentencing. Sentencing was crazy. So Robert Kern and Judy Kern, Judy White now, got life sentences for first degree murder. The wife, Jean Jensen, who had started this all in motion, she obviously took a plea deal to help them out, so she got 10 years in prison. She only had to serve five years in prison, so she's been out of prison for a long time now. And the hitman, 
he went on trial for murder last. So after Jean had gotten her um, 10 years, and both Judy Kearns, Judy White, and Robert Kern got their life sentences, the hitman, Andrew Ogilvy, went on trial last. The man who shot these pe this person in the back and in the front with a shotgun and killed him when he was 39 years old, he was acquitted of murder. I don't know why. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that the defense attorney had said that Ogilvy had been in Rockville the night before and the day of the slaying. And this was alibied by his mother and his brother, which a lot of us know that a family member giving you an alibi is not really the same as someone else doing it because they could be lying for you. I ask you to look for fingerprints in the house on the shotgun. One witness to tell you Andrew Ogilvy was there. The only people who will say Andrew Ogilvy is the killer are those with the most to gain. The lawyer then went on to say that the Kearns are trying to buy their freedom by exchanging testimony for commuted sentences that would make them eligible for parole. It's interesting that he says that, considering that neither of them ended up getting paroled, ever. Then we go on to what the prosecution has to say. That several people conspired to kill A.D. Jensen for the most selfish of reasons, sex and money. He said that Jean Jensen, Nora Kearns, who are serving life sentences for their roles, have anything to gain by not telling the truth. You'll get the opportunity to listen to convicted killers tell you about the killing, and they will tell you that it is the man over there pointing to Ogilvy that pulled the trigger. But he didn't serve any jail time. He got $50. He got a trial. He got free. So when Judy White says that she got the longest time, she's right. Her husband is the only one who had equivalent time as her, with her, but he died when he was 60 from cancer. So she's actually the only person still in prison for this, this uh, murder. And the other people involved, as far as we know, the other two people involved the hitman and the one who started this whole thing rolling are both out. Obviously we were waiting, like we said at the beginning, to find out if Judy got out of prison on, on this um, commutation from the governor and she was denied. So she's probably going to spend the rest of her life in that prison. Lucky for her, she's living in a pretty easy prison that allows you to do a lot of stuff you wouldn't be able to do in other prisons. But does she deserve to be out at this point? Um, usually I would say not really because she did plot for a murder. She was involved. She, you know, knew all about it. Now her daughter says, and Judy says, that she was, she was in a relationship with Robert Kern and was abused. And so it was kind of forced upon her to, to be involved in this. But I have to argue against that because it turns out that she actually, and this is shitty for her, she hadn't even been with her husband for that long. So if they're saying that she got pushed into this because of abuse and, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to say it's okay to be abused if she was abused, but to say she got like pressured into this situation, I mean, I don't know. But regardless, she was involved. There's no proof that there was any pushing her into it. It sounded, even when she talked about it, she's laughing when she's explaining it to us. I will say that it seems like she did have the smallest part in this. That does seem to be true. So she seemed to have the smallest part in this. She's still getting the longest sentence. But the reason that I would say she deserves to get out is for one reason. That when Andrew Ogilvy was having his trial, she was given a deal to be commuted to 30 years in prison rather than her life sentence if she were to testify against 
Andrew Ogilvy, the hitman. She was given a plea deal. It was in 1982 when they were when they were starting to have the Andrew Ogilvy trial, and the county attorney at the time, Lee Bine, Bean, gave her this plea deal. She would get 30 years if she were to testify against this man, and she agreed to do that. And they later spoke to him about it, and he said they do have an um, what do you call it? He's positive that they, that he has an affidavit from her for that trial. He's he said he was pretty sure she testified. Not positive about that, but regardless, so she should have gotten the thirty years, and that's why I don't understand why is this woman still in prison and she's been she's been there for forty one years more so now. So why has she not been let out at this point? She did what she was supposed to do. She agreed to a plea. Deal. I'd like to see this paperwork to show this plea deal to know for sure. But even the attorney, the county attorney still agrees with it. And even now, the new county attorney is still agreeing with it. He's one of the 60 people plus that sent in letters along with the warden and the parole officers and the parole board saying that she should be let out. And yet the governor did not let her out. So do I think she should be out? Yes, because of this plea deal, I think she should be let out. What the hell is going on? The person who shot him is out. The person who started this whole thing rolling, the wife, she's out. The husband would have been on still, but he's dead. And she's the only one left. She's the only one left who's, who's in prison. So it's bullshit. She had a plea deal and they, they're not abiding by the plea deal at this point. And what is Governor Reynolds' reason behind this? Because she got, you know, the letter saying Judy White has been really well, done really well in prison, blah, blah, blah. So she made a statement, and this is what she said. While White's rehab in prison is laudable, commendable, it is not a reason for parole given the serious and violent nature of the Jensen murder. So she basically said, hey, she's done great in prison, good for her, it's commendable, but because she was involved in such a violent, violent murder, I'm not going to give it to her. The thing is, Governor Reynolds has never commuted a sentence. She takes it very seriously, which is a good thing to take it seriously, but sometimes it's the right thing to do and I think that in this case it's the right thing to do especially when you consider other people that have been freed I want to talk to you about this newspaper clipping that I found in which Robert Kern says that he was told by the hitman the alleged hitman Andrew Ogilvy I did it Robert Kern who is serving a life sentence for his part in the slaying also testified that on the night before the slaying, he dropped the man off at the drive that leads to the Rural West Ranch home where the slaying occurred. And when he left the car, he took with him a 410 gauge shotgun, shells, pieces of rope, rubber gloves, and a stocking cap. Olubi is on trial here on a charge of first-degree murder in the death of Jensen, 39. Olubi is accused of shooting Jensen after tying up the victim's parents and holding them hostage in their home for 11 hours while he waited for Jensen to arrive. Robert and Judy Kern were convicted of first-degree murder in 1979 for their role in Jensen's death. They were accused of lining up the hitman for the slaying, of helping to make preparations for the crime, and of conspiring with Jensen's wife, Jean, in the murder for hire scheme. Now just think about that. They were convicted of first degree murder and received life in prison for setting up the crime. But the shooter, the killer, walked free. And Jean Jensen was the state's star witness against the Kearns after she turned state's evidence and pleaded guilty to a lesser charge. Whereas both of the Kearns spent their life in prison and will continue to do so. Some of Kearns' testimony in Scott County District Court on Tuesday conflicted with statements made during his trial by a man who now serves in the Iowa legislature. 
Now, this is where it gets interesting and where I spot a bit of a conspiracy theory as usual. So Robert Kearns sold insurance through a Cedar Rapids brokerage firm, Benefits of Iowa, Inc., headed by Philip Brammer, now a member of the Iowa legislature. During the Kearns trial, Brammer and Jean Jensen testified that they had met several times for sex prior to A.D. Jensen's death. So Philip Brammer is the man that Jean Jensen had started meeting up with for an affair, as I had spoke about earlier. And he happened to work with Robert Kearns, and I believe Robert Kearns even introduced them. So that starts to make this a very tricky case. Philip Brammer testified in 1979 that he was offended and felt it was unethical when Robert Kern sent in an application for a $50,000 life insurance policy on A.D. Jensen's life. Brammer said Kern was aware at the time of Brammer's intimate relationship with Jean Jensen. So why would that be unethical? That makes absolutely zero sense to me. And on Tuesday, Robert Kern had a different version of what happened than what Philip Brammer said. So who do we believe? The man who's cheating or the man who was involved and admits to being involved in a murder for hire scheme? He said the insurance upon A.D. Jensen was suggested in mid to late March of 1979 by Philip Brammer. But Kern also testified that he never heard Brammer say anything indicating that he knew anything about A.D. Jensen's impending death. It's crazy. So here is the most amazing part of this entire thing. Testimony also has placed Brammer at the spot where Jean Jensen allegedly handed Robert Kern an envelope containing $50 in expense money for the hitman, along with a picture of A.D. Jensen and a description of Jensen's truck. However, Brammer said he was present when an envelope changed hands, but he thought at the time it contained a get well card. He said, I would have had no idea if it contained money. Really? A get well card? The man who worked at the insurance company with Robert Kern and was sleeping with the wife of the man who was killed. Makes no sense. Actually, it makes a lot of sense that somebody else seemed to have been involved and is helping keep someone, several people in prison to hide that secret because he became part of legislature. I don't know. And he also made a comment later on that he thinks that they should serve out their time. But um, luckily, at least she's in a place where she has friends, where she can do a lot more than people that are not even in prison can do. I mean, from what I've learned from talking to other people, you can do so much in that prison that I didn't even know. I mean, you can order delivery takeout you can order clothes from um, catalogs. Thank you to the, the commenter who told me about that. I appreciate you filling me in on the different things you could do. If you guys go through all the comments from... So after oh, actually, I take it this back. information, just this little bit of information in this newspaper well, I article, hope you guys continue to like, do you share, think subscribe, this man all that stuff. Please has something share. to do with Please this? Please get other people Let on my know. channel. Because now that they've taken down one of my bigger videos... It's kind of going to screw me on my channel, but I'll be back probably with a video about Ruth Ann because I think her case is very interesting, particularly the fact that it was when she was 14 years old, which does not happen, but there's a lot going on with that story. So I'm going to be very interested in getting further into it and letting you guys know what happened. So until then, let me leave you with what Judy White's daughter said weird comment that I thought was a very, just a very strange quote. So Judy's daughter, Cynthia, who was 51 at the time of this quote, I'm not sure how old she is now. I'm not going to go searching for this woman. She made a quote about governor Reynolds right before this situation. And the fact that she thinks it might happen. 
She said that Governor Reynolds, she thought, was all about second chances because she says Governor Reynolds got a second chance when she got in trouble for a drunk driving incident and now she's governor. I'd say that's a little bit different than conspiring to have someone murdered, having a first degree murder charge, and then becoming a governor. Probably not going to happen as likely. You'd probably end up in a conspiracy to kill someone after you're governor. That might get me in trouble. Sorry. True though. I mean, come on. You're high up. You can get whatever the hell you want. But she made a strange comment. She said, with regard to governor, the Governor Reynolds, she said she, she seems to feel maybe women in particular deserve second chances. Um, maybe she does feel that way. It's a funky quote to say. I hope that's not necessarily the case. I don't think women are more should get second chances if men should not. I don't think with regards to the prison they're living in, I think it's unfair for women to be able to live in this better environment if men aren't given the opportunity to do so too. And if they're going to do it, it should span full prison, um, all of prisons. It shouldn't be just one, which is the same thing I feel for, for the legal systems. I think legal systems should be the same, at least throughout the United States. There shouldn't be changes depending on what state you live in. Okay, that's it guys. I'm gonna end it here. I hope you guys keep checking out my videos. Please share, like, subscribe, of course comment. I will try my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Check out my video on Todd Mullis. Let me know what you think about that. He just had a hearing. It was very just upsetting for me. I officially am gonna have to say, I don't think he did it. Look at the way he acted when he found out he was not gonna get a new trial and tell me if you think he did it or not. And that's it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye guys. Keep uh, watching my channel and I love you. Bye.